إن الله اشترى He didn't say إن الله بارا ويبيرا That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is selling his Jannah to you. No, he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has bought and purchased your sins and your amwal and belongings. He will pay you in shape of Jannah. The thing and stuff you are selling that is called Mabiyya. What? Mabiyya. And the payment you are doing gets called Saman. There is a general rule in Kitab al in Fiqh that if there is something wrong in Saman, so the contract that is not called Batil or Wired, we call it Fasid or Wired. So, when you will change that summon from faith to genuine, then okay, that bill was not okay. Here to me. This is the general one. So automatically, the Abdi Fasid turned into Abdi Sahih. That became violent. But if something is wrong with the stuff being sold, which is called Mabiya. So then the contract is Batil, that is white. So keep in view, our sense, our wealth and belonging and our time, that is Mabiyam or you can say sell commodity. We are selling it to Allah. Jannah, that is the summon Allah will pay us. Nothing is wrong in that summon. If there is anything, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can change it to a gentleman. That is genuine. But if something is wrong in the stuff we are selling to Allah, we sold to Allah. So then think about that. At that time, when the other and the contract were turned to Batil and to wild, so what will happen? Nothing remains there. And the same ayah. The Sahabi says in one it in Eretz that I came to Masjid. Someone was reciting Quran, so he was reciting with a very melodious voice. So I sat here in darkness listening to his recitation. Like my nephew, he was reciting Quran in prayer. We were listening to it and we were enjoying it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of you with Quran. My dear respected brothers, now the Sahabi said, he was reciting and reciting and reciting until he approached this very ayah in Allah Hashtara min al mu'minina an fusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al jannah. That Allah has purchased from you people your belongings and your sense as well and your time. He will pay you in shape of jannah. So he says, fa akhazahu al buka hatta kuntu asma. That guy started crying with louder voice. He wept to such an extent that only <coughs> Anin was coming out of his chest. But I never interrupted him. Until Bilal came and he gave us on. Then I said, let's see that who is the man who was crying the whole night. He said, when I came for Izzat Anabi Abi Bakr Siddiq. Rasi Allah That was Amsar Nas Ba'ala Anbiya. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Rasi Allah Ta'ala So he said, I was aware of when Abu Bakr Rasi Allah Ta'ala in one day he bought and purchased 17 slaves and liberated them for the sake of Allah because they were getting tortured by their masters. Why? Because they said, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. One of them was Bilal, Rasi Allah ta'ala. And then Jibreel Amin came and he brought this ayah that Allah has purchased from you people, your belongings, your time and your sons. He will pay you in Jannah. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he applied the ayah to Abu Bakr. 
رضی اللہ تعالیٰ عنہ سو دیٹ آئی واز اویئر آف سو آئی سیٹ وانت یو آر کرائنگ لائک دس وفیقہ انزلت The same ayah came regarding you and your practice. So why you are crying? He said, فَمَا أَعْرَفَ لِي بِذَلِكَ مَا أَفْعَلَهُ وَأَفْعَلْ بِهِ All the ulama are sitting here. They said, let's get it. Because so many ulama are sitting here. Like say, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Ten. Yes, at least ten. You know what I'm saying? So, my father went up and behave. But unfortunately, Shazian is dropped from text. So that's why we don't know that what is my father who went up and behave. Got it? Got it? Asmi'il hikm wa afsir. Yom riyatunana. Lakin is zalimun al yom. موسیقی He got amazed there. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not getting amazed with anything. So number one, he is only picturizing the situation to us. Because nothing is hidden from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You understand that these things are not. So sometimes, for example, my brother Shaykh Abdul Ghafar Sahib, he is saying that you are saying such like this, that the people do not understand. I say, actually, I'm trying to attract the ulama towards the island that you have to know all that. Yes, but anyhow, Musa, the Sharif sir, I didn't count in the group of ulama because I didn't notice him that he is sitting here. Yes, so eleven, ahad ashara kawthawa. Yes, so anyhow, my dear respected brothers in Islam, now, For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there is no amazing. <laughs> But he's picturizing the situation for us. Got it? Asmi'u bihim wa absir. So Shaykh Shaykh, Mawlana Hussain Ali, Rahmatullahi Ali. Who? Mawlana Hussain Ali, Rahmatullahi Ali. Say Rahmatullahi Ali. He was a great worry of Allah. Such a worry that the Madhavi Rahmatullahi Ali, he used to say that the ulama, they are mujtahideen from Quran. And Mawlana Hussain Ali, he is mujtahid from Quran. This man, he had a sight. He was looking into Surah. And he was saying, 11 subjects are there in Surah. And then he was saying, what's the connection of this ayah with this ayah? Number two, number three, he said that the subjects are here, but what is the theme of the surah? So mostly, he was bringing it out from the very beginning ayat of the surah concerned. And sometimes he said that the theme is mentioned right at the end of surah. Got it? And he said that why Allah is doing that, that sometimes he mentions the theme in the beginning and sometimes in the end. So then he smiled. He said he is testing this. You have to understand, I don't want to understand. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers, I mean, yes, now I want to speak for three hours, is that okay? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Because the breakfast was coming anyway. <laughs> Got it? So this breakfast could not be provided, or should not be provided for free. You should spend some time. Therefore, be concerned just like your wages for this thing to me very attentively. Got it? And maybe, Mufti Sharif, I will give you every, every one, one dollar or something. <laughs> yes, I will give him some dollars so he will distribute it to you. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers. So he said, Wa'an, you, so he said, Fama'arafani bizalik. My ma'arafat, 
for the thing you are indicating towards that is amazing means that I know that that this ayah was applied to me but I have a fear I had transaction with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but if on the day of judgment Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will find out something in my transaction that this amal of yours that was not in full sincerity when sincerity is not there, so it means that is not genuine, that is fake. And fake currency, giving it to someone. That, and this is not fake currency, fake stuff, the saleable commodity. That is a cheating. Adulteration is a crime. If somebody is selling you something like gas, where he has put kerosene, I love the gas. That's a crime or not? Loudly. Yes. <laughs> yes. yes, he would be sent to jail, not only fine. So, my dear respected brothers, he said that that fear I had it. And in hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to one of his sahabi, we call him Sufi sahabi. We call him, and sometime back, officer knows that when jihad in Afghanistan against Soviet Union was going on, at that time, we were in university. So at that time, some so-called type of socialist and communist people, they were a mission at that time. Officer man, right? Yeah, yeah, somebody was saying, a professor, or a student, I'm a communist. Even though he was not going to approach communism. <laughs> because that's a philosophy, number one, that's a science, number two, that's the system, number three. I've written a book on that. Sarmadara Nizam, Ishtiraki Yatur Islam. Sarmadara Nizam, Ishtirakiyat in Islam. And another version of this book I have written in English, Capitalism, Communism and Islam, our Islamic financial system. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers in Islam, Sufi Sahabi, so these people who used to call themselves socialist or communist, they used to call this Sahabi that he was a communist, he was our Imam. Inna Allah wa inna And that was? Abu Zar al-Fari, Raziyallahu ta'ala an. Because the maslak of Abu Zar, Raziyallahu ta'ala an, who was like this, that anything which is more than your daily needs, so he said, keep it in your house, that is haram. Yes, give it to others who are needy. Imam Bukhari, and Ta'liqah, and what? Say, in Ta'liqah, in Ta'liqah, he related from Sayyid Khudri Mu'allaqan without narration chain. And sometimes we say that Ta'liq is not authentic. But regarding Imam Bukhari, we say that Ta'liq of Imam Bukhari is more authentic than his Mutasir. Uh, Why? Because based on surety, he is not mentioning the narration chain. So Abu Sayyid Al Khudri, Razi Allah, and I. Or there in my book, there I have to rely on that every ta'aliq of Imam Bukhari, Rahmatullahi Alayh, that is muttasil somewhere else in his book or in his Tariq al Kabir, or Tariq al Sawir, or Adab al Mufrad, or in his Asma al Rajal, because Imam Bukhari had written so many books. So, my dear respected brothers, like as you know, that, that this is also has become a fashion. That if somebody mentioning a hadith, so sometimes somebody will say, this hadith is sahih or sahih. Yes, I don't know what happened to the people. What happened to the people? Why they are making a fun of me? And why they are making a fun of dini terms and alimi terms? Otherwise, he does not know that what is sahih and what is sahih. Yes, so nobody asked me. But sometimes then, when somebody asked me and he was claiming that he is a alim, so I say, sir, I'm a student. I'm a student of Quran and Sunnah. I'm studying. To tell you the truth, I don't know that what is what is saying. He said, like, sir, I said that five or seven years old, I feel shame. Yes, man is man. Yeah, what it means? Say, say, what it means? I said, I don't know. If you will define Sahih, then I will come to know that that is Sahih or that is Sahih. Yes, now he was doing I buying Shahid. Because he himself was not doing that what is Hadith Sahih. I said that this is not a word, this is a term. 
and term has to be defined, not to be translated. Term has to be defined or to be translated? Defined. As a definition, I know I want. He says, yes, I don't know. Then I told him, the five requirements are there for hadith is sahih. If any one of these five requirements that is not found there, still hadith could not be considered sahih. Yes, because the text may be that is narrated through different narration chain of the same level, so that will become once again, if not sahih, it will become hasan lirayrihi. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers in Islam, Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala, so Abu Zar, I was referring to, that Abu Zar radiallahu ta'ala, he was of the view, referring to different hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even once he hit Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu ta'ala in front of Sayyidina Usman in the time of Usman, he hit him like this, Abdurrahman, what's wrong with you? He said, what? He said, Zammaha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa tam da'uha. He was referring to worldly wealth. He was making some good uh, you know, comments about wealth and dinar and dollar and things like that. So he hit him. And he said, Abdurrahman, what's wrong with you? Zammaha Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa tam da'uha. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was condemning it and you are praising and appreciating it. And that was the case. When Sayyidina Osman radiallahu ta'ala, he told him Abu Dhar, Yes, you are a man of another world. <laughs> you are a man of a different world. Sayyidina Omar used to say that all of us with Urdu heart, we got changed. Because we got a lot of stuff and booties and spoils of war. So everybody is rich now. He said, a few people amongst us, they have not changed. Yes, they were in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are now the same way. One of them is Abu Zar and the second one is Abu Bel al Jarrah. My dear respected brother in Islam. So anyhow, Abu Sayyid Khudri radiallahu ta'ala an, he narrated that hadith is Imam Bukhari narrated that taliqan, that man kana lahu fasbu zadim, fal yu'id bihi ila man la zada lahu. وَمَنْ كَانَ لَهُ فَصْلُ رَكْبٍ فَلْيُعِدْ بِهِ إِلَى مَنْ لَا رَكْبَ لَهُ فَذَكَرَ مِنَ الْأَسْنَافِ الْمَارُ حَتَّى زُنَنَّا أَنَّهُ لَا حَقَّ لِحَدٍ مِنَّا فِي فَصْلٍ Abu Sa'id says that Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم once he addressed us he said that who has extra wealth he should give it to those who are in need of whosoever has an extra ride he should give it to someone who does not have a ride was a karamin asnaf in mar. Whosoever has an extra dress, he should give it to someone who is in need of that. Whosoever has an extra shoe, so he should give it to someone who does not have shoes. Was a karamin asnaf in mar. Abu Sayyid says, Hatta zaranna, anna la haqqa li hadim minna fi fazmin. In la haqqa me? Yes, la haqqa bihesu la nizah afi. That there is no undisputed right for anyone in anything he owns it. Still, the dispute is there. Why? Because a Sheikh Ali, who loved him. Sheikh Ali, Mahmoud Hassan Rahmatullahi Ali, he said there in Al Azhar Mahmoud that who will see Khalaqalakum ma fil arz jamia. خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا So number one, لَكُمْ and number two, مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِيعًا So he said that جَمِعًا is for جَمِعًا That the word, the thing therein for humanity in general. Got it? So then he said, must be equally distributed. No room for capitalism. No room for some other organism. خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مَا فِي الْأَرْضِ جَمِعًا And that's why we say, Ibarhati asli. What? Ibarhati asli. I have written a book in Arabic. And now the ulama, they are for iqta. They are using it. Al-Qawaid al-Fiqiyya for Mazahib al-Arba'a. But they were, that was a little bit complicated. So then they asked for its interpretation. So I said, I will write it in a different way, but not the interpretation of this book. This one you have to memorize it. That's for your memory. So then I wrote another one, Al-Mukbatu Zakiyyatu Zakiyyah, Bizzah, Bizzah. 
النخبة الذكية والذكية في القواعد الفقهية. So then I explained that through examples and surahs that the surah of Musla is like this. So anyhow, what is the qaida of al-ibahat al-asliya? That everything in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created for human in general. Yes? Say? Yes. But, wasaqqat al-yad tufir al-milk wa al-tamalluk. Whosoever will jump for him above and he will get it. Let, let me give you an example. Who has the right to stand here behind the Imam? Is there any reservation? Yeah. Say, no. This is a Bahati Asli for every Muslim. I have come all the way from California. Yes? I am Muslim and you are my Muslim brother as well. If I came first, I'm not known to anybody. And I said here, even Mufti Sharif Sahib does not have the right to make me stand up here from to go. You are a stranger, we are from the game, you are sitting in the front side. That's the law, can Sharif? No. Why? Because this is Ibahati Asli. This what? Ibahati Asli. So Ibahati Asli, when I grabbed it, I jumped to it, I occupied it, it became my right. Now nobody can make me stand in there from. Yes, if I offer it to someone with my free consent, that's something else. So same was the case in this world that everything was mubah for everyone. But when we own it, but still the basic and original dispute is there, the concept is there, doubt is there. So that's why. Otherwise, look at me, I'm giving you free tips. I'm not charging. <laughs> giving you what? Free tips. So now look, for example, I purchased 1,000, uh, say 10,000 gram wheat or wheat flour with my own money. That's my property. People are in need of that wheat and wheat flour. I don't want to sell it. I hold it. So now that is my property. Why Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says al-muhtakir al-khati? Then the holding guy, he is a khati, not muhti. Because muhti is forgivable, khati is not forgivable. Yeah, this is one word in Arabic. Which mazid al which mazid al is forgivable, which mujarad is not forgivable. So khati is the gunagar and the sinner. And muhti is someone who made a mistake. So mistake is forgivable. But sin, for that you have to do Tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So my dear Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-Muhtakiru Khatib. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in another hadith, Manihtakara hukradan arba'ina yawman faqad bari'at min huzimmatullah. That whosoever will be holding a thing in need from people and he is not selling it to them, so, the zimma of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is farikh from him. Yes, he should take his own care. Allah has nothing to do with the black guy. He is causing trouble to the creature of Allah, and especially to the human. So now, somebody has the right to say, that's my property, I am not selling it. Oh brother, just go back to al ibahatul asliya. Yes, the common ownership concept is still there in the very origin of that everything. If we will understand this one point of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our holy Quran, I think that the, all the issues will get resolved very easily. So my dear respected brothers in Islam, so coming back, Abu Zalifari, Razi Allah ta'ala, as you know, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was Hakim. Is there any man much more wiser than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? The wisest ever man was Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So that wisest man, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was knowing the nature of every one of his students in Sahabi. And he was talking to everyone according to his nature. Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi alayhi wa sallam. Imam Bukhari, he has written a chapter. Babu maja fi hap al amari Allah azza wa jal. This Bab and chapter is regarding which one of our amal is 
be much more like to Allah, the beloved to Allah. So here you will find different hadiths. In one hadith, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was asked that what amal is much more like to Allah. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, salah, prayer. Some other time, another sahabi asked, so Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, As-salamu charity in the cause of Allah. Another sahabi asked, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, jihadu fi sabili Allah. So one question, different answer. Why it is so? So the muhaddisin, they are making a patch up in these hadiths. Otherwise, apparently, it is looking like contradiction. Mahazallah, 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 only to make you don't say. Yes, if someone, he does not know and does not have the proper belief, he will be saying that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was a confused man. He was answering to one guy one thing and to another wife, another wife, the same question, same thing. And answer is different. This is not the case. One answer is, that a Sahabi, he was praying a lot. He was in love with prayer. Prophet <coughs> furthermore encouraged him that you should carry on. Go ahead. Prayer is the much more like practice. Another one, he was giving charity. That is an encouragement that Prophet ﷺ, he was appreciating his action. That that is the best one. And number two, the second study is that Prophet ﷺ, he was answering according to situation and circumstances. When prayer was needed, so Prophet ﷺ said, just do prayer. When charity was needed, do charity. Yes? God and God. For example, in Pakistan, a flood happened. In Turkey and Sham, Earthquake. An earthquake happened. So if there somebody will ask me or Sheikh Abdul Afar or Muti Sharif that uh, which one is the best amal? So if I will tell him there, that Salat is Tasbih. Yes. That's it. Oh, brother, people are under debris, they are dying and you are praying Salat is Tasbih. I will tell him, don't pray even Sunnati Muakkad, just do your first prayer and go ahead and help the people and bring them out. Because that's the requirement of the situation and the environment at that time. So Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was giving such like answers. So Abu Zarr Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was knowing his nature, that he is a Sufi Sahabi. Or he is a Zahid the Sahabi. So now look, I've written a book. As you know, that mostly the book is written on Khulafai Rashidin. But I have done some Bada'at to it. And I have written it Khulafai Rashidin, Sayyidina Hassan, and Sayyidina Muawiyah. Raziyallahu anhu ajma'i. Because when we are studying or writing the history of Qurafai Rashidin. So number one, we ignore the six-month Khalafat of Sayyidina Hassan, رضي الله تعالى عنه, which complete the 30 years mentioned there in Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Al-Khalafat al-Ba'di, Salasun al-Sana, Summa yakun mulkan aaddan, wa fi riwayatin adudan, Summa yakun mulkan jabariyan, Summa takun lo Khalafatan ala min haji al-Nubuwa, aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa sallam. So that's number one and number two. Muawiyah, Razi Allah, say Razi Allah. Because people have done a lot of good to this man. He's Katib al Wahi. He's what? Katib al Wahi. He's Hadi and Mahdi of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Allah Mahdihi, Wahdibihi, Wajalhu Hadi al Mahdi. So can we say that the dua of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was wrong? Mm, no. Say, no, no. Allah mahdihi wa hadibihi wa ja'alhu hadiyya mahdiyya. And look, how much in love he was with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The tabi'i says, that I came to America in Mumini. We are in the capital. What was the capital in his time? Say, Damascus. What? Damascus. So in Damascus. He said that I came from Irumini. So he was on the ground with one of his grandsons, small grandson. 
Yes, and he was like this, and doing like this on the ground. And this one, why was doing that as well? So he said that that was looking ajib to me. That's such a great man. Yes, and this baby work, <laughs> our baby sport, our baby play. So he said, I'm on my knees. What is this? So he said, actually, doing Tamil of the Hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, practicing the Hadith of Rasulullah, he said, what Hadith? He said, Kuntum Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَسَمِعْتُ بِالْقَالِ مَنْ كَانَ لَهُ سَبِيُّ وَفِي رِوَيَةٍ مَنْ كَانَ لَهُ سِبِيَةٍ But anyhow, the first one. مَنْ كَانَ لَهُ سَبِيُّ فَلْيَتَصَابَ مَعَهُ that whosoever a small grandson or granddaughter. So now he cannot upgrade his small baby to be level up a man. But for him that is easy to come down and to be like a baby. He said, I'm practicing that. And not only that. He was the one who shaved the head of Rasulullah sallallahu and cut in his nail. And he preserved the hair and the nails. At the time of his death, he said that these are the nails of Rasulullah sallallahu So when you will give me a whistle, so put some of these nails in my eyes, some in my ears, some in my nose, some in my mouth, and the remaining in my kafana. That is called Aqidat. That's called Aqidat. Aqidat. So anyhow, Abu Zar, Razi Allah Ta'ala, he said that I was with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he looked at me, he said, Abu Zar. He said, Naam, Ya Rasulullah. So he said, Jaddid is Safina. Fa'inna al-Bahra Aniq. Jaddid is Safina. Fa'inna al-Bahra Aniq. In small river, you can have a common type of boat here. Just do boat in India. But if you are going to Atlantic or to Pacific, so what you need? A proper ship and not an old one. Otherwise, it will sink. The waves will break it. So he said, the jaddi the safina, for in the bahra aliyak. The safina, the boat and ship of your amal, make it new and proper. At Jain 1-1, because that ocean is very deep. And then the second thing, wa zada kamilan fa inna safar ba'id. This is not a small journey going from Atlanta, which is the closest city to, to Atlanta. You just say downtown. You are going from Bennett to downtown. So how much money you need if you are going in public transport? Like ten dollars. That's enough for you. Yes. But if you are going to New York, ten dollars will work. Then you need a few hundred. If you are going to Britain, so a few hundred will work. Then you need a few thousand. The journey is prolonging. The money will be going up. So he said that this journey which you are going towards a now very lengthy journey. How far that is, only Allah knows. So he said, Take complete and perfect stuff with you. So you may not fall short of your needs and necessity on your way towards Allah. So may get much stuff of Allah, <coughs> which can take you to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And number three, وَخَفِفِ الْحَمْلَ فَإِنَّ الْعَقَبَةَ كَأُوْفِ their travel and their journey is a climbing one. You are climbing towards Allah. When you are climbing on hell or hell top, so do you take with you a lot of stuff which is not needed even? No. Or extra burden you throw away? Throw away. Say, throw away. extra burden you throw away. Yes. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, oh, hafif alhamdulillah, no. fa'inna al-aqabata ka'ud. That is deep. So throw away your extra burden. Mean the bad amal and the evil deeds, throw it away. 
Don't take it with you, otherwise you will fall down. And number four, وَأَفْلِسِ الْعَمَلَ فَإِنَّ النَّاقِلَ بَصِيرٌ You are going to present your amal to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will be purchasing your amal from you and He will be giving you jannah as a saman. So now here, we are cheating one another. Yes or not? In Sali, we are cheating or not? Yes. We are cheating one another. Why? Because they are ignorant or they didn't know. They have shot up knowledge. They are not that much knowing the business concern. So we are. But can we cheat Allah? No. To give him faith in the name of Jan? We cannot. So he said, وَأَخْلِسِ الْعَمَلَ فَإِنَّ النَّاقِدَ بَصِيرٌ That was the fear of Abu Bakr رضي الله تعالى. The time crying because you cannot cheat Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anyhow, so we are Ramadan is on our doorstep. We are in the month of Sha'ban. And the Hadith Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Rajab, Shahrullah, wa Sha'banu Shahri, wa Ramadanu Shahr Ummati. Rajab, the month before Sha'ban, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, that that is the month of Allah. So Shaban is not the month of Allah. Say. Yes. Say. Yes. Because months are time. Time and space both belong to whom? Allah. Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Rajab is the month of Allah. Shaban is also the month of Allah. So we say in this book, the Shrifi, that this is my attribution for Sharafat. That's a status Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given to the month of Rajab. Like as we say in Holy Quran, Surah Anzalna. Surah Nuh, the first ayah. Surah Anzalna. Wafarna. So Surah Anzalna. Mufassirin said that Surah Nuh, this is Muqtada. Anzalna is the khabar. We said that it work. Yes, they said it, but we said it doesn't work. Why? Because. Being a Muqtada a Marifa, this is Shart. Because if that is Nakira, that is wrong according to grammatical rules. Yes, so they say, but the mean is for Tazim. When you will make it Musufa, so that is Taksis and Marifa. Surah Al-Azim of Dun Anzalnaha. But we say, no, this is not the case. Shem Shaykh Ramatullah Ali. Once again, who? Mawana Hussain is Ramatullah Ali. He said that this surah is the khabar of Muqtada Muqaddar. So that is Hazihi surah. Hazihi surah. And the meaning for Tazim. That this is a very great surah. And then Allah says, Anzalnaha. Hazihi surah, Anzalnaha. So this is khabar of Allah. Khabar of Khabar of Islam. We have sent it down. So what about Surah Fatiha? Who sent it down? And what Surah Inas? What every single Surah of Quran, Allah has sent it down or not? Why He sent it here, Amzalna? This Surah, we have sent it down. So there we mention this part of Tashrifiyya. This part of Tashrifiyya, this for Sharafat, and this text of this Surah. Azi Surah Tun Azimah Tun Amzalna. And then Allah says, O Farazna. What? O Farazna. We don't say as Hafiya that any surah is recitation is for us. Yes, Imam Shafi, Rahmatullahi Ali, Imam Malik, Rahmatullah, Imam Abdul Hamad, Rahmatullah. They all three, they are of the view recitation of Fatiha is for us in prayer. But we the Hanafiya say recitation of Quran is for us in prayer. Is that it? Not specific. Part. Recitation of hmm. Quran is for us in prayer. Recitation of Fatiha is wajib. Recitation of Fatiha is wajib. wajib. So I have written a book in this regard. And the book name is Alaytila Fi Masai Alaytila. What? Alaytila Fi Masai Alaytila. So there is a dispute in the Messiah, but that is not an enmity. That is not a kufr in Islam. That's not a matter of kufr in Islam. Al-Itilaf fi Messiah al-Itilaf. Baba Abdul Rahman 
our Pashtun poet, great bully of Allah. He said to the Sadhu for a Mazaba Sarayodi, Kumauta Paki Peda Kurek Dela. That all these four Mazayab are one and the same. That any. Look at me. Al Shaykh Shaykh Abdullah Ali, he was referring to me. He said that this is the greatest of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is the Khatmanabu of Muhammad, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That whatever he has done in prayer once, Allah kept it intact in one way or the other until the day of judgment. When he was going to go, he raised his hand. Yes, when he was going to go, he didn't raise his hand. Yes, so both the practices are intact in Ummah or not? Say. So this is a matter of dispute or this is a matter which indicates the greatness of Muhammad. The greatness. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Beloved is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in his every action and every deed. So my dear respected brothers in Islam, I was referring to that wafaraz na'aha. So I told these brothers that wafaraz na'aha that we have made for us to know the ahkam of the surah because a lot of ahkam are mentioned there in Surah Inu. Sayyidah Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she used to say, Allimu nisa from Surah An-Nur. They teach your nisa and your woman, Surah Nur, so they may come to know that how a Muslim lady should be. She should not be Mary Jism, Mary Marzi. <laughs> no. Your Jism are whatever Marzi of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Got it? So, Farazna, Ta'allum Ahkamiha. Farazna, Ta'allum Ahkamiha. And say, Umar, Razi Allah Ta'ala, you know, you are living in America. Yes? So many people, they are taking social security, that's government system. Yes or not? They are taking or not? Yes. Yes. So, social security. And this social security system was actually introduced in human history by Sayyidina Umar. Razi Allah. The proper army. The proper army. army. That's introduced by Sayyidina Umar. Razi Allah. Otherwise, before Umar, it was a volunteer work. All the Muslims, they were armed. They were going for jihad, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There was no any determined army in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and the time of Abu Bakr. Razi Allah. Jihad is there. All the Muslims are ready. Got it? The revenue system. Everything on record that was done by whom? By Sayyidina Umar. The police department, it was established by whom? Say loudly. By Umar. So I was referring to the welfare system, the stipend, or the financial support that was introduced by Sayyidina Umar. And that's why in Scandinavian countries, yes. Scandinavian countries, the social security system, or stipend, or financial help, they call it in their law, Umar laws, according to Umar laws. They call it what? Umar laws. Because that's introduced by who? By, by according to Umar laws. That's written in their law. According to Umar law. So my dear respected brother, he was giving this social security and that stipend, but for women, there was a condition. For one, there was a condition that she must know Surah an -Nur, that what the rules for a Muslim woman is. Then she will live like a Muslim woman. So that's why the woman there was spending it. Yes. That Paris of Nasa. Tomorrow is what? My test. Check is ready, but if I will pass the test. <laughs> the check is ready. Yes, you got stimulus or not? <laughs> Say loudly. Yes, I'll ask you, you got it. I'm not asking you for any money. Yes, you got it. So stimulus check. No test was there. Corona itself was a test. <laughs> I wrote a book on Corona because at that time I was writing from different angle on Corona. So now that's a 260 pages book that's printed in Pakistan Corona. 
Yes. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and so somebody asked me that here, the Corona book came, the Alim from Pakistan, he said that the Corona book, that's a very nice book. I said, Alhamdulillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Mm. Because so many issues were coming at that time, that what about endemic or pandemic? Yes, what about virus? That is Masnu'i, artificial, the injected one, or that's a natural one. I say if that is injected one or natural one, you have to treat it now. Yes? Yes, Allah. If that is injected, so you will say, well, let him do whatever, because Mr. So-and-so and so has done it, I don't want to counter it or to have any precaution. You are causing trouble to yourself. So anyhow, but, and at that time, I don't know what's wrong with us. Some so-called mullahs. What? <laughs> so-called mullahs. They were giving their own fatwas regarding different issues. That there are we, we cannot go to the masjid. So if here my nephew Sakillah is leading the Rabi and only Mufti Sharif are standing with him, only one among people are not coming. Yes, so through this technology, at home, the people can follow him and Ravi. So they say, yes, you should do that. <laughs> yes, go ahead and do that. There was not only one thing. Yes, so many issues were coming. Yes, another issue, issue came. Yes, they can we give our zakat before its due date? So so-called mullahs, mullahs, they said, no, we cannot. <coughs> Yeah, because that has not become due. Like as we cannot pray before time. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with people. Why people are that much in a hurry to become Muslims? Yes. This title people are in love with to be called as Mufti Sahab. Yes. So I'm calling them Muftor Sahab. <laughs> yes. That this is Muftor Sahab. A azab is there all over the world. This is Shaykh al Hadith. And this is Shaykh al Hadith. And this is Shaykh al Hadith. Yeah? So I said that Shaykh al Hadith because he is talking a lot of words. <laughs> in, in our time, in the whole Pakhtun there were five Muhaddisin, they were called Shaykh al Hadith. Now in every village, somebody is to graduate last year. Uh, so what are you doing? Uh, I am in such a brother Shaykh al Hadith. I said, so you are not making wudu. That's why you have hadas every time. <laughs> <laughs> so anyhow, my dear respect, we should not make fun of this thing. This is making a fun of this thing. We are making it a joke. We must have the fear of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters are not there, but anyhow, maybe they are listening to. So my dear respected brothers in Islam, the ayat which I have recited in the very beginning, everybody knows that these ayat are the ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. Ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah. Surah Al-Baqarah. Bakara mean what? The cow. The cow. There is a story in their surah. A story. In the Laya Murukuma Tasbahu? Bakara. And that is only in six ayat of their surah totally. Six or five. The whole story is in five or six ayat. But Surah itself is 286 ayat. But it has been named as Surah Al-Baqarah. So thus, I tell the brothers in Dars that the name of Surah number one, that is Tawqifi and that is not Tawfiqi. You cannot give your own name to a Surah. Surah came to the Prophet ﷺ from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala like if the Surah came to him. That is the name of this surah. And this name is number one for introduction and number two for reference. The ayah you recited, so you said from such and such surah. 
Number two, for introduction, the name of the surah and so and so. But that is not the theme and the only subject of surah. Because as I mentioned, that there are 286 ayah and the Bakara story is only in five ayah. Six, but the sixth one, we separate it. وَإِجْدَدَتُمْ نَفْسًا فَالْدَرَاتٌ فِيهَا وَاللَّهُ مُخْرِجُمْ مَا كُنْتُمْ تَكْتُمُونَ I am going like this. إِنَّ اللَّهِ يَعْبُرُكُمْ وَتَزْبَحُ بَقَرَةً Oh, how it will be, man, how this Bakara is, and what the color is, and this is tilling, and blowing, and that is not, and so, and so, and so, and so, and so. And then Allah said, and when you killed someone, فَالْدَرَاتٌ فِيهَا You disputed death in that case. So now most of the Mufassirin say that this is the start of the story, but mentioned in the end of the story. And we say these are two different stories. There's not one in the same story. But our story is different. And we have to nafsan fadaratum fiya walla mukhrujun ma kuntum taktumun. Otherwise, the Mufassirin faqul nazribu bi baazya. A izribu al mayyidi bi baazya baqara. Yes, they attack the dead body of the dead one or the killed one will be part of the body of Bakara, the one you slaughtered. The one you slaughtered. So he will get back into life and he will tell you that who killed me. We said, Bakul Nadrivu Vibhadiha, they touch or hit the body of the dead Vibhadiha. Vibhadiha is a dead man. Vibhadiha? Yes, a dead man. He touched his body with his hand. Touch his body with his hand, that will do a process of self pollination. Yes, only to make you to understand. And he will come back to life. Yes, that will be the case. On the day of judgment, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not be touching the dead body with the peace of Baqarah. Yes, to bring them back into life. Yes, one particle will touch another particle and that will be a life. Yes, and I am not doing that. Who said it that these are two different stories? A great Mufassir. Who? A great Mufassir. Omar ibn Mahmud al-Nasafi, sahib of Ganz al What is the name of his Tafsir? Madarik al Tamzil. So he mentioned in Madarik al Tamzil that these are like two different stories. But our Shaykh Shaykh Ramadullah, I mean, he mentioned it. So somewhere about they say, oh. This is Tahrir by Sheikh. So Sheikh said, Oh, I have not done this Tahrir. Yes, Imam Nasafi did it. <laughs> yes, what's wrong with you people? Imam Nasafi, you believe in his comes with the Kai, in his Madarik with Tanzil. It is Madarik with Tanzil. And even in his Al Aqaib al Nasafiya. Al Aqaib al Nasafiya is written by whom? Like eight pages. Yes, Marri Salami. But Sheikh al Aqaib is written by whom? By Allah of the Zali. And amazingly, Umar ibn Mahmud and Nasafi Ramadullah such a great fakir. That is, you know, that we the Hanafiya, our authentic authority in Qutub Mudarrasa, that is the day of Allah Umar Ghinani. Allah Umar Ghinani. And Allah Umar Ghinani is the direct student of Umar ibn Mahmud and Nasafi. Got it? Imam Nasafi was his teacher. Sir. I am giving you all this history for free. Yes, take up our tea, you will you. I am not asking for money. No, sir, tea is there. So, anyhow, my dear respected brothers in Islam. So, Surah Al-Baqarah. Now, this Surah, mostly it came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the second year after Hijrah. Because in this Surah, there are all kinds. In this Surah, there are all in this surah, there are amal. In this surah, there are umur in tizaniya, state and government rules. In this surah, there are certain laws. So, the Muslim community and Muslim state, which was established by Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa from migration to Madeira, that state was 276 square miles. Got it? That was a new community, newly established community. A newly established state and newly established government. It was in need of all these things. It was in need of strengthening their faith and belief. Number one. Number two, promoting the characters. Number two, three, implementing the laws and the rules. 
So this surah came from Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in second year after Hijrah, and it started with alif alif lam mim, and the same alif lam mim that is written in so many places there in Holy Quran. Yes, but pronounced in a different way. But pronounced. If you will not put the haraka here on alif lam mim and alam, so both are one and the same in shape. But there we pronounce or we recite alam tara kaifa, alam tara ilam tara ibuba, and here we say alif lam mim. If you will say that alam zalika kitab da hai wafi, that will be wrong. And if you will say that alif lam mim tara kaifa wa alam tara ibuba kwa sabil fi, that will be wrong as well. Got it? So keep in mind that the ayat of Quran we classify in usul tafsir to three categories. Number one. We call it muhkamat. Number two, we call it mutashabihat. And number three, we call it mutashabihat. So muhkamat are the ayat where the meaning and sense both are known to one who knows literally Arabic language. Not Arabic language. Which language? Literally Arabic language. So he knows the meaning and he knows the sense as well. That ayah is called muhkamat. Yet I ask him, Mukka, but there is Mutashabe. So I am not referring to Mutashabe in Khati sense or Zulu Fatah sense. Mutashabe, that the meaning, literal meaning, that is known to a literally Arabic personality, but the sense is not known to him. What is the sense? Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ كَالَ فِي هَذِي أَعْمَى he will be blind in Akhirah. So all those who are blind here, that is an injustice that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will resurrect, will resurrect them on the day of judgment blind as well. That why it is so? Otherwise that is the meaning that whosoever is blind here will be blind in Akhirah. And that is one disputed issue between us, the Hanafi and Imam Shafi. Rahmatullahi alayhi. Imam Shafi alayhi says that there is no majaz in Quran. Yeah. No matter. So we have fear say Majaz is not there in Quran. What you will do with this ayah? Yes, you will make the blind here in this world blind there as well. Woman kana fiha. So it needs us to know the sense that what the ayah means, woman kana fiha zi ama, bahur fil ajati, ama wa adar musabiha. So anyhow, my dear respected brother, Alif Lam mean. Alif Lam mean. So the third category is Muqattaat. Muqattaat, the little meaning is known, but the sense is not known. For that you have to approach Shaykh Abdul For that you have to approach Mufti Sharif Sahib. For that you have to approach Fas'alu Ahl al-Dhikr. In Kuntum la ta'alamun. Otherwise, you will go astray. And the third one is Muqattaat. We are neither the meaning is known and not the sense. What is the meaning of Alif Lamin? Anybody know? No. no, and what is the sense of Alif Lam Mim? And amazing, this is the miracle of Quran. That Kufari, Makkah, and Mushrikeen, they were making objection to every single thing in Quran. Like, they were saying that Rasulullah said, Quran is Arabic. That this Quran is in Arabic language. But there are non Arabic or strange, strange words there in Quran. So how he said the Quran Arabic? So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said like what? So they said like yes, tahzi'un, ustahzi'un. We don't know these words. Yes, like kubbar. What? Kubbar. Like ajuz, bilgabirin, ajuz. We don't know. So they were sitting there. An old man having a stick. Yes. Bent back, he was walking. He was walking. So Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ya'am, fawwad. So he came. The strange man, he was walking something. He came. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sit. So, as you know, that in such a way, that person, very difficult for him to sit very soon. He was close to the ground. Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, no, no, Baba, stand. Yes. So, so when he was coming back to that form, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, sit. So when two, three times Prophet did it to him, 
So the he last is time push. Old man. Yes. So he said, Atas Tazi Ubihi. Wa ana shaykhun kubar. Wa ana ajuzun kubar. That you are making a fun of me. Atas Tazi Ubi. Wa ana ajuzun kubar. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought out from his mouth all three words right at the moment. Prophet uh -huh. looked at these words like Quraysh, what do you think? Uh -huh. He is half the Quran, he will be eating Taraviyah or what? <laughs> Where from he got it? Where from he learned these three words? But you don't know that. So there is nothing wrong with Quran that this is Quran and Arabiyah. So Alif, Lam. Me. So they were making objection to everything. There is no one way I have not found. Maybe that's shot of my knowledge. That they have ever made any objection to Muqattaat. That if neither the meaning is known, nor the sense is known, what is the purpose of that? So Mufassiri said that maybe that was the literary practice of literate people at that time. That in the start of their speech are their maqala, are their thesis, are their verses and poetry, they were saying such like words are such like proof. So that's why there was no room for objection. There was no, no room for objection. That's number one. And now the second point, and I will conclude. There. The meaning is known to Allah. That's why Mufassirin they say Alif Lam Mim Allahu A'lamu bi Muradihi Dizalik. Allah knows well what He meant with. But still, from time of Sahaba, Rizwan Allah Ali bin Ma'i, Sahaba were giving secondary meaning to these letters. Like Ibn Abbas, Razi Allah Ta'ala An, he said that Alif stands for Allah, and Lam for Lutuf, and Mim for Man. For what? For man, man in the meaning of Ihsa. So he said, Allah, Lutfuhu wa mannuhu zalika al-kitab. Allah, Lutfuhu wa mannuhu zalika al-kitab. The blessing of Allah and the power of Allah is this book. And Shem Shem, Rahmatullahi Alayhi, he said that Alif, Lam, Meem, Alif, Awwal, Lam, Lazim, Mim Mumin Al Awal Lazim Lil Mumin Zalik Al Kitab. Then the first must what? Say the first must for a woman is this book. Number one to believe it. Number two to recite it. Number three to understand it. Number four to practice it. Number five to implement it. Because these are the five reserve rights of Holy Quran. We are bound to the Alhamdulillah, we believe in Quran. Yes or not? Alhamdulillah. Yes. Number two, we recite Quran or not? That is the second duty. Number three, we are trying to understand Quran or not? Say. Yes. Yes. Number four, in our individual practice and life, we are trying to practice it or not? Yes. Yes. And number five, that is not our duty. We are only saying for that we are ever. The country is Muslim. If the rulers are Muslims. They are bound to implement that as law of the land. So Alif Lamim, the first must for a moment is Zalik al Kitab. That book. This book or that book? That book. So now. Some of us read, they say that this book, they are sitting in front of you. Even though if you are reciting from your memory, reciting from that is also close to you because you have a written shape of that book in your brain. Yes or not? Yes. yes. So this book or that book? That is not far. Why you say that? So they say life in certain languages. For ihtiram, we are using the plural pronoun for individual. Look, like in Urdu, we say, Aap ne farmaya. Hum ne kehte, tu ne kaha. 
Otherwise, up is for plural, but we are using it for respect of an individual. You know what I'm saying? Aap ni pramaya. So they say that this pronoun abai that was used for greatness. So that's why they say zalik al kitabu this great book. Yes, they don't say that book. They say this great, this great book. Even though some mufassirin they said that zalika that is actually an ishara to kalam e nafsi. To what? To kalam e nafsi. The quality and attribute of Allah subhanahu wa taala which is in His entity. So zalika al kitab. Ah, at least not that one. So the one that is in Lohi Mahfuz, the one yeah, which is in Lohi Mahfuz, <coughs> are the one which was there in the first asman. After that, Allah sent it down from Lohi Mahfuz to Asma of Dunya. In Nazar Nahu, Fila Al Qadr. So Zalik Al Kitabu, that book, La Rabi Fi. So what about this book? In this book, there is any doubt? Mm, no. Say no. 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 Yeah, though that was only for academic purpose, I mentioned that Zalik al Kitabu, La Rabi, Udal Bil Muttaqeen, and that is a perfect guidance for Muttaqeen, not only for Muttaqeen. In Holy Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, Qazi Bezari, who? Qazi Bezari. Yes. Let me tell you, Bezari is the utmost difficult tafsir in tafsir. Is it? Say. That is. So in our masjid back home, yes. We were teaching there at that time. Tolaba used to be there. There was an old man from somewhere from mountainous area. He came and he was staying in our masjid, having a big turban, yes, tasbih, glasses, a stick, white dress, more neat and clean, <coughs> looking like a muhaddis kabi like Imam Bukhari. <laughs> but he had not learned Nazirah even, but staying in masjid. And then the students, the tolaba of Mufunale, they used to teach him the nazira. Alif zabar lam al, ha zabar mim ham, dal pesh do al hamdu lillahi lam zir lam, lam zabar ha zir lillahi rabb and so and so on. So then. Once he asked me for the I said yes. He said that when I'm going somewhere, so the people are giving me that term. So when Bodhi says Salam Alaikum, Bodhi says some people say Sheikh says Salam Alaikum. I say Wale, because they think of me that he's a great alim, and I cannot recite Quran. So sometimes they ask me that Bodhi said, you are a great alim, but you are studying with Qadi said in this age. <laughs> Sixty plus or seventy. What you are studying? Yeah. So he said, if I will tell them that I am doing nazira, so it means that <laughs> my whole status is gone. <laughs> yeah. What? So you don't. So what should I say? So I said, they tell them that I am studying the matan of Bezari. And studying the matter of Bezari, and then they will ask, "What is Bezari?" So that the utmost difficult of Sira for the Quran. He said, "That is good." <laughs> yes. So Bezari is the utmost difficult of Sira for the Quran. I'm writing a chapter on that. Inshallah, just make dua. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala be with you. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers in Islam, Zalik al Kitabu, Zahar al Bafi, so Imam Bezari the last thing. Imam Bezari says that in Holy Quran, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "For the nas, that this is guidance for human in general." And number two, for the mu'minin, wa hudan wa rahmatul mu'minin, that's the guidance for the believer. He said, "You dhal muttaqin," that that's a guidance for muttaqin and pious people. So what it means? So Imam Bezari, Rabbi Allah Hale, he says that hidayah and guidance it has the three stages. So the hidayah and guidance of a human in general is to believe in Quran, and the hidayah of mu'minin is to practice and to become muttaqi, and the hidayah for muttaqi is to go ahead furthermore. So that's why Allah says, "Wa dhalil muttaqi." May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala bless us. May Allah Subhanahu wa Taala say whatever I have said. If something 
mistakenly came out of my mouth, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive you that. But you listen to it very attentively, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your family. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the family of the Sharif also Hadrat Mubafar sahab, all those ulama and these Quran of Ba especially, my nephews, that they are serving the community a lot. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless all of you also. With me, my four friends, they have come all the way from California. I told them that I'm going to join the Islamic Institute, so they bought their own ticket that we are joining you. But then, as a courtesy, even though I know, so I told Tariq Jam, they just call Asad and tell him that food will be available there. <laughs> yes. When we were coming, so Tariq Jam was telling them, because they are coming, Tariq Jam is coming with me. But he told them that you are going there to tell you one thing. If you will ask dear Hadis family for what, so they will bring the roasted lamb with them. <laughs> if you ask for what, you must eat this lamb. And I said, for 40 years he is fighting with me. That meat is good for health, and I'm telling you that I cannot eat it. Yeah, mine and his dispute, that is going on since the time of Bishar University. When we were sitting there in the university, so close to his department. I was in law department, he was in Islamic, Islamic, uh, uh, Islamic studies department. So close to his department, there was a restaurant. And they were making samosa of kima, ground beef. And in the samosa, mostly we are putting the potatoes. What? Potatoes. The potatoes, yes. Uh, in the end, I will tell you a joke. In our Pakhtun Khwa, at that time, a time of, uh, right after the brief, in Pakhtun Khwa, in government, there was one education minister. He was himself was not educated, but he was an education minister. <laughs> yes. He was himself was not educated. Even when we were in Islamabad University, the Federal Minister of Education, he failed metric. <laughs> but he was education minister. Yes. So once he struck out a few students from university. So then we were having a protest against him. Yes. So at that time, I told the students, we should not say anything else. We should not say bad words against the education minister. But what we were saying, we were saying, Wazir Talim ko Talim do. And he resigned this. <laughs> then he resigned. Because we put him that way down. Student life is a different life. So our slogan was, yes, we were saying, Wazir Talim ko. So we were saying, Wazir Talim do. That he does not want Talim is that educated guy. <laughs> So yes. this minister, he was also an education minister, but totally uneducated. That's why, Jan Banarsha, you know him? Hmm. Yes, the great philosopher. Jan Banarsha, the great philosopher. Great philosopher, but the ugly man in the creator of Allah. Yes, that's the creator of Allah, but it's said that he was very ugly man. That's why he never married. So one young girl from Germany came all the way to Britain and met him. So he said that, how can I help you? He said that, I want to marry you. He said, you are okay? <laughs> <laughs> she said, yes. So then he asked her, but why you came from Germany to, here in Britain, nobody is ready to marry me. Why you are coming here to marry me? She said that, actually, I'm thinking, if God will give us a son, mm -hmm. Genius like you and pretty like me, that will be amazing. So Bernard Shah said, I cannot marry you. If the case became other way around, so then what? <laughs> 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 other way around me, ugly like me, and ugly like you. They took him all the way from Germany. So Jar Bernard Shah, and as you know, there's Sadat. You know Sadat? Yes. Sayyid Khan, no? the family of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So with them, there is in the end, Shah. Fulan Shah, Fulan Shah, Fulan Shah. Yes, even though this Shah, Bernard Shah, that is S-H-A-N, but that other Shah, S-H-A-H. Yes, but Shah pronounces them. So Bernard Shah passed away, their education ministry was sitting there. So one other minister said, 
that today George Bernard Shah passed away. And this minister, he was from Shah family, from Sardar, from Shah family. So he said, oh, he passed away. He didn't know that he was Bernard Shah, but he heard the word Shah. So he was thinking that he was from Sadat Aghase. <laughs> so he said that um, in our Agha family, he was the best man. So they said he was a Jew, but not from Agha family. <laughs> 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 so what I was referring to? Samosa. Samosa. Yes, Samosa. So that education minister, who was not educated, he was visiting Britain. So when he was taking his lunch, yes, official visit. So, as you know that we the Pashtun, what do we do with the chicken? Not this plastic chicken, the real chicken. <laughs> this is the plastic chicken. Yeah, the real chicken. When we eat it, so the meat we eat, and then we, the crunchy bones, yes, we bite it as well, because the juice is very tasty. Yes, and as you know, that in Western world, they are not taking the whole meat up. Chicken, they throw it to dog or cat. Yes, with some meat. Eat a little bit and the remaining. Throw yes. it. But that was in some. He did it like this. So this Minister of Education of Britain, he was making a fun of him. So he asked him that uh, what the dogs and cats are eating in your country. What means that you have made it, make it totally so what the dogs and the cats are. And as you know, that the Western world, they are eating potato a lot. So he was very smart. He said that they are eating potato. <laughs> <laughs> he put them down. He said that our dogs and cats, they are eating potato. So when I was going to upset, at that time, when we were student, so at that time, he was bringing me that samosa brown beef. So I was eating one. He said, uh, I said, just take this other one, Dr. Sevakana. He said, this is good for your health. And the same thing is going on up till now. <laughs>